now we want to talk about uh, persistent storage. So the problem is that, uh, as probably you have, you, have, you have noticed, that MEMS are always lost after the chatbot is closed. In other words, MEMS are only valid during something called a session. While the user is using the chatbot and hasn't closed it off, right? That's called a session, right? And during the session, the MEMS are, uh, can be changed, can be edited, and, and so on. They are, they, are, they are kept alive. But once the chatbot is closed, the MEMS are gone. And when you restart the chatbot, the MEMS uh, will all uh, start from, the, from, from scratch, okay? So the question is, how do we remember what has happened before? Uh, if let's say the chatbot is closed and then open up again, can we, is it possible to actually remember the user's details for data uh, uh, in subsequent in interactions? And the answer is yes. And some places where you can use something like this, a facility like this, is in things like bookmark. Let's say your chatbot uh, gives this, uh, something like a movie recommendation. Let's say he bookmarks the, the movie, right? So when he leaves the chatbot and it comes back again, he can retrieve his bookmarks. That's one possibility. Uh, let's say you're building a game and you want to have, let's say it's a storytelling game using chatbots and you want to have game checkpoints. Well, this is the way you do, to actually do this. You can just save the game uh, state uh, into persistent storage and then recall it when the, when the user comes back in again. So he doesn't have to restart all the, the game from scratch. Let's say you also want to know uh, what, what selections this user made previously, okay? You can also do that using persistent storage by saving the previous uh, selection. Uh, progress info as well. Let's say, for example, uh, you've got uh, like a fitness app, right? And the person's weight is changing over time and he keys in his weight uh, or key in how he feels, you know, like a, like, an, uh, like a feeling app or something. But you want to see the pro or chart his progress over time. This is where you want to save that kind of data to persistent storage. Uh, uh, similar to bookmarks, you can have a favorites. For example, let's say you can actually uh, click on stuff, you know, and save it to a favorites list, and then recall uh, the selection. Uh, or perhaps your chatbot has some results. Let's say if it's like in 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 the case of travel chatbots, it might recommend a schedule, for example, right, uh, itinerary. Uh, how do you save that so when it comes back in again? It doesn't have to redo the entire uh, process. He can actually save something that he likes. Okay, see something that he like, already likes because he's, he's gone through it before. And finally, things like notes and so on, note taking can also be done in the similar uh, mechanism. Okay, so all of these things can be handled by the very simple mechanism called uh, persistent storage. So if you want to use persistent storage, there are two words that are actually very important. The first is p hash exclamation mark, which is pronounced p store. Okay, and pstore takes in a key, which is a string and any kind of value and swallows them up and actually stores them into the persistent storage. And there's similarly pfetch, okay, which is p hash with the at symbol. And that takes in the key and retrieves the value from persistent storage. Okay, very simple. Now, if the key doesn't exist, then it will return a null value. Now, if you're familiar with hashes in Smojo, this is very much like using a hash, okay? And if you don't know what hashes are, I'll give you a link later on where you can actually look it up. Okay, so let's go with a concrete example. Let's say you have a travel chatbot which determines a list of places that the users wants to visit, okay? And this, we, let's say we store it in a hash called schedule. And the idea is that we want to save the hash, we want to edit the hash, we want to be able to add to the hash uh, over time. Okay, and the way to do that is using uh, a persistent storage. So on the template part, let's say we have got the first rule, which it's, uh, if you, let's say the user says display my schedule, uh, we just want to just retrieve the schedule, that's the schedule word in blue. Okay, remember schedule here is not a string, it's a smojo word, followed by another smojo word. Remember smojo is left to right. So the, the output, so to speak, of schedule is fed into the next uh, uh, word, which is display. Okay, so schedule first. So the way you should read this is get the schedule, then display it. Okay, very simple. And let's say we have another template. So when he says add Jakarta or add, 
uh, Singapore, for example, you want to add that, that place name into the schedule. Okay, and, that, and we, use that, we do that using a C, a command, uh, a command a line, and it just, takes the, it just takes the reference X and then calls plus schedule to add to the schedule. And of course, it responds appropriately. And similarly, you want to have like a removal kind of word to actually re remove a certain word. Let's say he says, uh, let's say he doesn't want to uh, go to uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh, for example, right? Then you can remove that from the schedule. Okay, so these three templates are what we're going to use. And these three templates refer to three, uh, four words, the schedule word, display, plus schedule, and minus schedule. Okay, I won't talk about display now. I'll just talk about schedule, plus schedule, and minus schedule. The schedule word will output uh, a hash. Okay, and the way to do this, again, remember, Mojo is uh, top to bottom, left, uh, to write. So the way we, 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 we are doing this is to provide the p fetch. So remember that the, the, the uh, p hash at symbol is a p fetch. It requires a key and it will produce a value or null if the key doesn't exist in permanent storage, in persistent storage. So we are going to use a key called schedule. That's the thing in green. Okay. There's so many schedules around, so don't get confused. So the first part is a check. So we take the schedule as a key, we run it through the, the p fetch, and p fetch at this stage could uh, return either a valid object or now, a valid hash or now. And we do a check with the if. If the value is now, we just drop it, we remove it from, 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 the, from, the, uh, from, from consideration, and we instead create a new, a new schedule, which is a blank hash. Okay, if it's not now, the, you will just exit and return the existing hash, the retrieve hash that is. So the word new schedule needs to be defined. It needs to become, it needs to be before the word schedule, right? And all we are doing here is that we're creating a sorted hash. So a sorted hash will be, everything will be sorted in alphabetical order or lexicographic order. And all we're doing is we're actually saving this hash using pstore. Okay, and then returning the, the hash as H uh, to, the, to the caller. Okay. Now, we want to define a word called save schedule, which just saves the schedule uh, itself, the hash, into uh, storage. Okay, so it's just the word schedule with the key, schedule, which is the, with the, the value, and of course, you got P store. Now, plus schedule is very easy. What you want to do is you want to take the place name, make a duplicate copy of what dupe is for, and then save it into the schedule hash. And once that is done, we want to save that schedule hash itself. And similarly, for, P min uh, for minus schedule, we take the place name, we drop it or remove it from the schedule uh, hash, and then save the updated schedule, right? The logic should be clear. Now. When we do this, what it means is that each time plus schedule or minus schedule is called, the schedule itself is always being saved uh, to persistent storage. And that could be a slow process, okay? If you do too many saves onto persistent storage, it could be slow. So it's always best to make sure you come to a point that the user says, okay, I want to store, I want to save my schedule, I'm happy with it, uh, and then save it, not before, okay? So the way we do that is to actually create another template rule where we match something like save schedule, okay? And then we use that to trigger a, a saving, all right? So we've got our three template rules for display, for adding a place name, and also removing a place name. We want to add a fourth uh, schedule, a fourth a template called save schedule, okay? And what this test is, once, it, once you, you've mapped, uh, once you've actually triggered save schedule, you call the C and you save the schedule itself, all right? But that means that we need to uh, amend plus schedule and minus schedule. So plus schedule is now much simpler because we don't have to do any more saving and so on. It just duplicates the, duplic duplicates the, the place name and saves it to the schedule hash, okay? We're not using p hash exclamation mark. This is just hash 
exclamation mark because this word is the store word from hash. Okay, so I will give you a, a, a link later on that you can read up more about how hashes are used. And similarly, you've got a minus schedule and uh, all we're doing is just hash drop, which removes the key from the, from the hash. Okay. Now, if you want to know, know more about hashes, please uh, either take the QR code here or you can go to Chatbot University, the build, and go to the guide, which is on the extreme right, and uh, click on hashes. Okay, so for a code demo, I've got now two uh, topics. The travel topic contains all the templates and the schedule template, schedule.m, contains the Smojo words that I've defined. Okay, that's my main.m. I need to have schedule the Smojo words above the templates because uh, Smojo words have got to be uh, used or declared before they can be used. Okay, so the, the template, the, the template travel.m contains all, well, obviously a thing called, a, a type called place and things, uh, Singapore, Jakarta, Bali, etc. right? And I've again got the four templates uh, with a save schedule and I've inserted an additional one, which is a catch all, all right? Uh, and it contains the IDK with the, uh, and it just logs the IDK, uh, the IDK question. Now, the schedule.m has got the new schedule, schedule, save schedule, plus and minus schedule, and it's got the display as well. The display uses maps and uh, maps and reductions. Uh, again, I would encourage you to go through the Smojo tutorial. It's very fast and very short and you can understand what these two things actually do, okay? It's also in the guide as well. So here's the initial interaction with the user. So the chatbot starts with a welcome message and the user says, okay, uh, add Jakarta. And the response is, okay, added Jakarta to your schedule. All right, that means that the uh, plus schedule rule, uh, uh, sorry, word was triggered. Then you say, add Kuala Lumpur. It says, okay, add Kuala Lumpur to your schedule. Then the user instructs the chatbot to save the schedule and the chatbot responds with success, your schedule has been saved. And if you click on display my schedule, the way I've done it is that it will display it as buttons. Okay, so you've got Jakarta and Kuala Lumpur. Okay, finally, the user closes the, the chatbot and goes back in again, okay? so. If this were uh, uh, done using MEMS, when he, if he types in display my schedule, it would say blank or nothing at all, right? But in this case, uh, it does respond uh, with his previous selections, which is Jakarta and Kuala Lumpur, okay? Now, obviously we need to clean up these things and tidy them up, like uh, remove the underscores, maybe change the case, et cetera, right? Uh, and as many uh, techniques you can use to, to do something like that. Right, but for now, uh, it's just to illustrate how the uh, persistent storage actually works.